In this screencast, we're going to look at the income elasticity of demand and the cross price elasticity of demand. With the income elasticity of demand, we're going to calculate it and then also look at how that coefficient helps to determine if it's a normal or inferior good. And then we'll learn how to calculate the cross price elasticity of demand and look at how that helps determine if it's a substitute or a complementary good. Remember when we talked about the price elasticity of demand, we've talked about how responsive consumers are to a change in price. You can look at the four determinants of the elasticity of demand, and that can be about the substitutability. If something of income and how much it takes up, if it's a luxury item, then the good is very elastic. Um, you could also look at uh, necessities versus luxuries, and the more you need something, then um, the more inelastic the good is. And then also time. How much time does it take in order to find a substitute? The less time that you have, the more elastic the good is. Another way to do it is to mathematically compare the percentage change in quantity demanded to the percentage change in price. Um, remember, we use the absolute value, so the number is always positive. And if your elasticity of demand comes out to be greater than 1, then the good is elastic. If it's equal to 1, it's unit elastic. And if it's less than 1, it's inelastic. Graphically, you could look and see if it's more vertical. The more vertical it is, the more inelastic. And the more horizontal that it is, the more elastic with the demand curve. And lastly, one of the quick ways is the total revenue test. And this is where you can look at that relationship of price and total revenue. If price and total revenue change in the same direction, the good is inelastic. If price and total revenue change in opposite directions, then the good is elastic. So in this here, we're going to look at the income elasticity of demand. For the formula for that, you have to look at the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in income. So we're not looking at the percentage change in price. And you're looking to see how responsive or how responsive consumers are. Because if they have a positive response to it, the good is a normal good. And if they have a, a negative response to it, then the good is an inferior good. So let's take a look at an example here. If John's income goes up by 5% and the quantity demanded increases by 10%, what is the income elasticity of demand and what type of good is this? Well, we gotta do, we gotta use this formula here and plug the numbers in. The nice thing is these are already given to you in percentages. And so the percentage change in quantity demanded is the numerator, and that increases, so it's positive, by 10%, divided by the percentage change in income, and his income went up by 5%. And so 10% divided by 5% gives you a coefficient of 2. And so now, in order to see if this is a normal good, we need to, we could also just look at the positive. So if the question didn't ask you to calculate it, and it just asks what type of good it is, you could just take the direction of income going up, and so that would be um, a positive, and the quantity demanded increasing by 10, that gives this positive here. And so a positive divided by a positive gives you a positive answer. And so this good is a normal good. Okay, in this one here, John's income changes from 35000 to 40000 and the quantity demanded changes from 25 to 20 units, what is the income elasticity and what type of good is this? So we have to use our formula here, and on the numerator is the percentage change in quantity demanded, and in order to figure out the percentage change, you take the new minus the original divided by the original. He went from the original of 25 to the new of 20. So 20 minus 25 divided by the original gives you that percentage change in quantity demanded. So now we need to divide that by the percentage change in income, which he goes from 35,000 to 40,000, so this is the new, minus the original, and divide that by the original. This gives you an income elasticity of a negative answer up top. Remember, we don't take the absolute value, 20 minus 25. Um, divided by the uh, denominator here, and the income goes up, so that's going to be a positive 0.142. I know that's a little bit of a tough one there, but there you can see that you have a negative 1.41 coefficient. Well, again, if it didn't ask you to calculate it, and it just asked you if it was a normal or an inferior good, you could look and see the percentage change in quantity demanded 
it went down from 25 to 20 units, so that's a negative number, divided by his income, which goes up from 35 to 40,000, so that's a positive number. So a negative divided by a positive gives you a negative. So this good is an inferior good. So you can see it in this way here by you calculating it, and then also if they just ask you based upon the um, sign. Okay, another one to look at here is the cross price elasticity of demand. And with the cross price elasticity of demand, you're looking at the percentage change in the price of one good relative to the percentage change in price of another good. If it was the price of good A and the quantity demanded of good A, that would just be our price elasticity of demand. Um, but since we're looking at two different products and we're looking at the responsiveness of, of how much people demand them based on the price change of another, that's where we're looking at is this a substitute good or is this um, a complementary good. So in this problem here, if the price of good A goes down by 3%, and the quantity demanded of good B increases by 5%, what is the cross price elasticity of demand and what type of good is this? So I gotta use this formula here and I gotta look at the percentage change in quantity demanded of good B, which they figure it out for us, thank you. And so it increases by 5%, so it's a positive number. Um, and if the price of good A goes down by 3%, well that's a negative number. And so 5% divided by 3% gives you a negative 1.67. Now, they might not ask you to calculate it. They just might ask if, the, if this is a uh, substitute or complementary good. We have two ways to go about and do this. One, you could just memorize if a negative sign means complementary good or substitute. Or something that I want to suggest is you think about uh, tr the train that we use and how that applies. So what they tell us here is that the price of good A goes down by 3%. So with our train here, we have the price of good A going down. Well, the law of demand tells you that if price goes down, the quantity demanded has to go up. And in the problem here, they tell you that the quantity demanded of good B goes up. So if I see here that the quantity demanded of A went up and the, quantity, and the demand of B goes up, that means that they're going together which means that they're complementary goods. So a negative sign will result in a complementary good for the cross price elasticity of demand. Now, if you're somebody who just memorizes and they're not asking you to figure it out, then you could look at your cross price elasticity of demand. You can see that um, it goes, for the percentage change in quantity demanded, it goes up or increases by 5%, so that's a positive number. The price, of the other good went down, and so that's a negative number. So a positive divided by a negative gives you a negative. Okay, let's try one more. Cross price elasticity of demand. This time we have a situation where if the price of good A increases from fifty to sixty dollars, and the quantity demanded of good B increases from fifteen to twenty. I know it's cross price elasticity of demand because they're talking about good A, and then they're giving me information about good B. So it's not about good A for everything. Um, so for this one here, I need to use this formula of percentage change in quantity demanded of good B. It increases from 15 to 20. So I need to take the new 20 minus the original 15 and divide that by the original. And then I need to do the same thing for the price. It went from 50 to 60. So 60 minus 50 divided by the original of 50. That gives you um, a cross price elasticity of demand of 1.65. So again, if you can remember that a positive number is a substitute, then you can just look at the numerator and denominator directions. Or you could again look at a train. And that's where you have, it tells you in here, the price of good A increases. And so we know that if there's an increase in the price of A, that means that there has to be a decrease in the quantity demanded of good A, which in this problem, it also tells you that good B increases. And so you have the quantity demanded of good A going the opposite direction of the demand of good B, which would mean that they are a substitute good. Or again, you have here where you have the quantity demanded of good B increased 
the uh, price change of good A increase. And so a positive divided by a positive uh, gives you a positive. And if you can remember that that's a substitute good, then you can solve it that way. So you got two different ways that you can go about um, in figuring out the cross-price elasticity of demand.